several years ago, I was taking a walk with my sister, and uh, she began to uh, tell me the things that she appreciated uh, from me as being a big brother. And she said, well, one of the most important things I like about you, Jim, is that you're humble. And I looked over at her with excitement in my eyes, and I said, that's exactly what I've been trying to tell Barbie. I'm humble. There's an old praise song that I really like, and uh, it went, uh, Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Higher and higher, and he will lift you up. And it kind of got me thinking about our uh, launching verse today out of James chapter 4, uh, verse 10, uh, which reads, uh, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. In honor. Uh, today we're looking at the all about me attitude and how it is very contrary of what God thinks is honorable. Uh, James and John and the rest of the disciples didn't understand this truth until mama came uh, to talk with Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 20 verse 20 the Bible says, Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request? He asked. She replied, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in the places of honor next to you, one on the right hand and the other on your left. In the book of Mark, chapter 10, uh, we find the same situation, but without mama's help. Maybe the writer was trying to show a, a kindness to James and John because who wants their mama to fight for them? It's embarrassing. Uh, it just kind of reminded me of a movie called Waterboy, and in the movie, uh, the Waterboy is in a, a class in college, and uh, the professor gets up and he's telling everybody why uh, an alligator is honorary, and it's because his medulla oblongata. And the water boy disagrees and says, "No, no, that's not what Mama said. Mama says, uh, Mama says, Mama says that uh, the the alligator is honorary because it has all those teeth with no toothbrush." Uh, but here in in this story uh, in, in Matthew, uh, Mama doesn't get a say uh, in what will happen with her sons, and even Jesus says in Mark. Uh, chapter 10 verse 40 uh, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right hand or my left God has prepared those places for those for the ones he has chosen uh, now this is a complete uh, submission of Jesus to the Father and even though he is God he submits to the Father he wants the Father's will to be done and when the disciples hear what James and John had said, they became very angry. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 24, it says, When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. Indignant means to be annoyed and displeased. They were angry. They were irritated. Some have even claimed that maybe uh, it is because they didn't think of it themselves. I'm not sure. But either way, Jesus uses this uh, for a teaching opportunity. And Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 28 uh, is our uh, main passage today, and it says, But Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and the officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be a servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. The disciples were looking to be honored, so Jesus teaches uh, them what our Heavenly Father thinks is honorable. Our world has a selfish, all-about-me attitude that is destructive to our relationships and to our testimony uh, as believers. Uh, God teaches us here that it's not all about me. If we want to be honorable, we first got to be different. Uh, that's our first thought today. And in Matthew chapter 26, chapter 20, verse 26 says, But among you it will be different. The idea of the word different 
means to change in action, to change a mind, to change the desire, to change the worldview. This is a very radical perspective that is contrary to what the world thinks. To be honorable, you got to be different. The manner in which they should act would change their world. Uh, when the spies uh, went to search out for the promised land and found things to be scary and difficult, they came back and reported very negatively. But Caleb was different. He believed the Lord. He trusted his ways. He was a servant and did what was honorable. And God honored him. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, it says this about Caleb. It says, but my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. What a compliment by the Lord. Uh, this should be our desire as we serve the Lord to have a different attitude than the others around me have. We can find ourselves even in church where others just don't care about what is honorable to the Lord. They look, they look to be celebrated and praised. They want position and power. Now, I love being encouraged. I'm not going to lie about this. If someone says, Jim, uh, that was a good lesson or a good message or that's a nice song, it motivates me to keep going. But I have to be careful not to get a big head. And, and I want to be different. Uh, and that brings me to my second thought is not only we got to be different, but we have to be a servant and a slave. First of all, we got to be a servant. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 26, it says, whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. Uh, a servant here is a person working for another, a messenger, a minister. Uh, it's where we get the root of the word deacon. And today in churches, deacons are uh, placed in places of prestige and power. It's not difficult to find a deacon that rules a church. Uh, many times we find that deacons are voted in not on their honorable traits as servants, but because of money or the jobs that they have. In the early church, there were some situations that the pastors couldn't always get to. Uh, people were hurting and needing help, but the workload became too much for them, so God gave the, them the position of a deacon that would help the poor and the widows of the church so that the pastors could continue to preach. In Acts chapter 6, verse 3, and it says, And so, brothers, select seven men who are well respected and full of the Spirit and wisdom, and we will give them this responsibility. Now, we can't all be deacons, but we can do our part uh, to be servants. We work for the King of Kings as messengers of His hope and love, as well as displaying that love through our actions. We serve so that others will see our actions and glorify our Father in heaven. This is why the best leaders in the church are individuals that just don't boss people around, but they lead by example. I must be willing to do the dirty and sometimes difficult work of the Lord because this is honorable to God. Uh, but not only should we serve us, but we need to be slaves. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 27, it says, Whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. Jesus says it. This is very simple. If you want to be honorable, if you want to be a leader in the church, you got to be a slave. Being a slave of Christ is contrary to our world and to our own flesh. We want to be in control. Now, the unique thing here is that a doulos or slave in this passage is, is one that chooses to be one. After a certain amount of servitude, an indentured servant would be released. If that person uh, desired to continue to serve, uh, they had to choose to remain a slave. And that person would be marked in the ear by placing a large mark, usually in the ear, uh, as an identification that that person chose to remain as a slave. We call Jesus Lord. Uh, the Apostle Paul would identify himself frequently as a doulos or a slave. He chose to continually follow the Lord. He was devoted and disregarded all of his own desires. Uh, both being a servant and a slave is difficult for our prideful minds sometimes to endure, but it's what pleases the Lord. Jesus says we got to be different, but we must also be willing to sacrifice. And that's my third thought. We have to be willing to sacrifice. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 says, says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. We often sing that song, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Now, if we really believe this, we'd be willing to do whatever God desires for us to do. Now, we are not robots. God created us with a free will, so we have to choose to serve and to follow him. Uh, but, it, but it should cost you. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, So, brothers and sisters, since God has shown us great mercy, I beg you to offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him. This is a simple truth. What is honorable to the Lord is the willingness to give it all up for the Lord, 
each and every day that we live. It's like when a coach tells you to leave it all on the field, don't hold anything back. Now, the coach doesn't want you to die, but he wants you to give it all you have. Don't hold anything back. And it reminds me of two little creatures, uh, a caterpillar and a chameleon. Now, uh, they're very different. Chameleons have the amazing ability uh, to alter their appearance in order to blend into their backgrounds. Christians who do this have no effective witness. On the other hand, a caterpillar has the amazing ability to morph into something beautiful. A butterfly, uh, the process makes the creature appear dead and silent for a while, but in the inner transformation or, or metamorphosis, uh, it's all taking place, and this is the manner of transformation that God intends uh, us to undergo through, through uh, offering our bodies as a living sacrifice to Him. So, are you going to be that all-about-me Christian, one that is selfish and is just like everyone else, just blending in? Or are you going to be like the caterpillar that is transformed into something glorious? I want to be more and more like Jesus every day. I want, to, I want to be a living sacrifice. I want to follow his example and be different. I want to serve the Lord and his church because it's not all about me. That day the disciples learned that truth. How about you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love and your mercy. I, I pray that today, God, that we could be uh, different, that we could be like you, that we will not have this selfish attitude, the selfish ambition, God, uh, but that we would be willing to be the slaves and servants that you have called us to be, uh, choosing to serve you, choosing to follow after you, to be uh, that li living sacrifice, one that's holy and acceptable unto you. God, I also pray for those that maybe have never trusted you. I pray that if they are listening right now to this message, that they will realize that they need you in their life, that they will realize that you are the only one that saves, that you died on the cross so that they could have hope and they could have life. That it's not about what we do or haven't done, but it's all about you and what you did for us on the cross, how you paid our payment for our sins. And I thank you so much, God, for your mercy. I thank you for your grace that we so uh, do not deserve. And I pray that today would be the day of salvation for many. And I pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you guys. Talk to you later.